Shalom Aleichem, meine liebe Freund. Ich heiße Mottel Didner und das ist 15 Minuten Jiddisch. Mehr weniger. Jede Woche bringe mir euch eine Mini-Lexie in jede Sprache und Kultur von dem nationalen Jiddisch Theater Volksbühne. <lacht> Welcome back to 15 Minute Yiddish. If you missed any of our past episodes, Daigenisht, you can view them all online at nytf.org. Heint will mir schmusen begin. Mode. Architektur. Und Kunst. Wir wollen sich anheben mit der Mode. If you know anything about these topics and would like to chime in, please feel free. Jewish fashion is a lot like Jewish cuisine in that it borrows quite a lot from our neighbors, but it makes it kosher by following Jewish laws and customs. Motel, Megich episogen? Megen is a verb meaning may. In English, may is a modal auxiliary verb like should and it does not get conjugated, but it does in Yiddish. Megan has a regular conjugation in both the present and the past tense. Ihr megt, Professor. A few examples of Jewish religious law which govern clothing include a mitzvah, that is a commandment, for men to wear a fringed garment with a blue thread, and a prohibition against wearing a garment of mixed wool and linen. This is referred to as der Schatnes. One may, however, wear separate garments of these fabrics at the same time, as long as they are not fastened together. And there are Jewish religious laws which address modesty. The Yiddish word for modest is Sneas. Adank, Professor. When we think about Jews who dress in a clearly distinct manner, Chassidim come to mind. Chassidische Freuen are not bound to any particular style of clothing, abit snias, but there are customs involving a woman's hair. Der Minig is a custom, die Minhogim in the plural. Oh, I know about this. Ich meg avade. Chassidische Freuen schneiden. Oh, that means to cut. And note that in the past tense, there's a vowel shift. They schneiden die Haare, wenn sie haben Chassene. Dennoch trocken sie das Scheitel. That's a wig. Und einmal trocken sie über dem Scheitel das Tichel. Die Tichlin in the plural. Oder die Fatschele. Die Fatschele in the plural. Adankende. For Hasidische Mener, the overall fashion is based on the customary dress of 17th and 18th century Polish nobility, most notably the fur hat known as Dos Streimel, the Streimlech in the plural, as well as the caftans or long coats known as the Kapote, the Kapotes in the plural. You'll also hear this referred to as the Bekeshe, the Bekeshes in the plural. It's interesting to note that this item of men's clothing buttons right over left, the opposite of men's clothing in other Western fashions. The reason for this is that the right is seen as holier than the left. There are other items of Hasidish men's clothing which are grounded in religious practice. Professor Thompson mentioned a fringed garment with a blue thread. This is known as the tzitzis, that refers specifically to the fringes. You'll also hear it called der talis cotton, a little talis. Cotton is the Hebrew word for small. Der gartel is a band which is worn around the waist on the outside of the clothing 
to separate the upper half of the body, which is considered holier, from the lower half while praying. And the side locks that men wear, in accordance with the Torah law prohibiting cutting hair from the temples, are referred to as di peis. Mortal, megiche besogen? Adrabe, you're the most fashionable one among us. I'm sure you've got a lot to add to this conversation. A shenam dank, darling. Many of the big names in the fashion industry are children of Eastern European Jewish immigrants. Donna Karen, Calvin Klein, and I'm sure you know that Ralph Lauren was born Ralph Lifshitz. Diane von Furstenberg was born in Belgium, the daughter of Holocaust survivors. But going back even earlier, we know that Jewish workers, among the immigrants who came to America between 1880 and 1920, were the backbone of the so-called needle trade. Nebuch, working in sweatshops as well as converting their overcrowded apartments into workshops by day. Take interessant, Sophia. I think that wraps up our conversation about fashion. Let's talk about architecture. Der Architekt is an architect, feminized to the architectin, plural the architecten. When we talk about Jewish architecture, we're really referring to shulm, as other structures within the Jewish community were not distinct from other buildings that one might find in a given region. The architecture of shulm was often dictated by rules requiring that they be smaller than the local church. And in Poland and Lithuania, there were edicts which prohibited a shul from being constructed from stone like a church. And as a result, hundreds of wooden shulen were constructed from the 16th through the 19th centuries. Unfortunately, almost all of them were destroyed in the Holocaust. Only a handful still stand today in Lithuania, and a few have been restored in recent years. Older synagogues can be found in Prague, which was spared the destruction of other cities. Among them, the Altneuschule, meaning the Old New Synagogue, which dates back to the 13th century. And in many cities across Europe, as well as New York, we still have grand synagogues built in the 19th century in the Moorish style, which are quite ornate. Hey, Mo'o, ich will episode, Meg ich? Du megst? Adak, there's a few Yiddish names for parts inside the shul that are good to know. Their Polish does not mean what it sounds like. It means an anteroom. That's kind of like a lobby, but we don't call it a lobby. Der Oren is where the Teure is kept. It's often built along the Mizrecher Wand, the eastern wall, and it's covered with De Paroiches. That's an embroidered curtain. The Bime is the raised platform where the Teure is read, and in older shuls you'll find that it was built in the middle of the room, with the seating around the walls facing in towards the center. The seats along the Mizrecher Wand were reserved for the Negidim, the big shots, and the Chazin sings from the Omid, a pulpit. Oisketzechend. And this leads us directly into our discussion of art, because so much Jewish art was directly related to religious practice. Until the modern era, Jews did not create art which depicted human beings, like the Roman and the Greek sculptors, or the Renaissance painters, because this was associated with idolatry and graven images. Pre-modern Jewish arts were more often what we would refer to as artisanal decorative objects, such as those found in the shul or meant for ritual use at home, such as candlesticks and spice boxes. There were a few exceptions. Some homes and synagogues built in ancient Roman-occupied Israel contain mosaics, occasionally even depicting human figures. There were illuminated religious texts from the Middle Ages in the style of the Christian illuminated manuscripts, as well as synagogues with illustrations painted onto the walls and even some with stained glass, but they avoided human figures relying instead on symbols which were associated with biblical characters and stories. Some communities interpreted the law to allow for symbolic use of body parts, 
like hands, as well as animals which were associated with a person, but not human faces. One famous illuminated Haggadah replaced human faces with bird heads. In the 20th century, however, there was a huge wave of Jewish visual artists. Here is some vocabulary associated with the arts. The sculptur is a sculpture. The sculpturen in the plural. The artist who makes a sculpture is der sculptor, feminized to die sculptorke, die sculptoren in the plural. Paint is die farb, plural, die farben, and sometimes this word is also used as a synonym for die kolieren. A painting is das molerei, die molereien in the plural, and a painter is der moler, feminized to die molerke, die molers in the plural. And this leads us to, you guessed it, verb time! Today's verb is moln, und es kramt sich mit unser Verb von jener Woche, zoln. This is a regular verb. Let's take a look. Ich moll. Du molst. Er sie es molt. Mir moln. Ihr molt. Se moln. Alle zusammen, ich moll, du molst, er sie es molt, mir moln, ihr molt, se moln, sehr sehr gut. Molen is a regular verb in the past tense, and it pairs with the helper verb hoben, hoben gemolt. There is another usage of the verb molen when you're asking somebody to imagine a scenario or suppose an idea, you can use molen. Think of it as asking somebody to paint a picture in their imagination. In this usage, we pair molen with the reflexive sich. Wein, mol sich as es ist schön das Jahr 2200. Uva. In 2200, all the Menschen ubetub red Yiddish, while the UN hat bestimmt, as Yiddish is the Ebisse all weltliche Sprach. Und zu lieb dem, all the Menschen verstehen, eine dem anderen, und sie sof kol sof scholem auf der Welt. Obe, wir haben doch nicht kein fliehen de koitos. Yasha koyach wein. A few new good words there. Allweltlich is a mashup of words meaning all worldly or universal. And eine dem anderen means one another. If we're going to discuss Yiddish visual arts, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about Mark Chagall. Meg ich reden wegen Chagallen? Ich hab sich gelehrt wegen ihm in mein Kunstklasse in Schul. Avada megst du? Adank. Auf Jiddisch hat Chagall geheißen Moische und nicht Mark. Er ist geboren geworden in der russischen Imperie in 1887 und er ist geboren in Paris in 1910 zu studieren mit die moderne Künstler und er ist zurückgekommen in Russland in 1914 zu sein mit sein Kalle Bele. Er hat nicht nur gemalt die berühmte Malereien, Fantasies von Städteleben, er hat euch gemacht Bilder für Bücher von jüdischen Schreibers, Le Moschel Judlamen Peretz. Und nach der Revolution hat er eine Sache gearbeitet mit dem neuen Stadt Jüdisch Theater in Moskau. Er ist zurückgefahren in Paris mit Bailen in 1923 und dort geblieben bis 1941, wenn zu lieb der Melchome seinen See gekommen in New York. Bailey ist nämlich gestorben von Krankheit in 1944. 
noch der Milchome ist egal zurückgefahren in Europa und gewohnt in Dorem Frankreich, bis er ist gestorben. Als 97 Jahre in 1985. Als sag jeden haben gedruckte Malereien von Chagall in der Heim. Mir haben zwei. Und in Jerusalem, in Hadassah Spital, kann man sehen die berühmte und schöne Fenster, was er hat gemacht. A herzlichen Dank, Scott. Indeed, Mark Chagall did design both costumes and sets for the Yiddish Theater, and I'm very excited to discuss that next week. Please join us then. Derweil, seid gesund alle. Thank <laughs> you.